So on that page, it's the first time, at least in our joint meetings, when we have to find a determinant of the matrix of 4 times 4. Like this. It's the first time we have to do it. In principle, nothing new will come up when we evaluate the determinant like this. We can use our method based on uh, row or column decomposition. If I'm not mistaken, here I use the uh, row decomposition. Actually, it's a very natural choice here to use the row because, I mean, to use the first row because the first row is the one which carries extra zero here, meaning that when I start dragging my cross, when I start dragging my cross across the first row, the term which will correspond to this position of my cross, it will vanish. So that will make one step less, well, one, one, one term less of evaluations. So in principle, in principle, we can evaluate this in, uh, determinant the way we evaluated all of the other determinants on Tuesday. I can do the row decomposition, and here it is. So if I put my cross here, that will be the term. Well, accidentally. Uh, that will be the term one times. That will be the term which corresponds to this position of my cross, uh, element one, and this minor, three times three minor, size one less. Uh, that's my first position of the cross. Uh, if I move my cross to the next element, the next term will be, it will be plus 1, because, because we have a sign alterations, that's why it is plus 1, and that is the minor, which will be appearing next to it. I just copied all this 3 times 3. It's a lot of copying, but this time, if you do it via minor method, you have to do it. And then when I move my cross to this position, this, like I said, this position doesn't bring anything because of the zero. But now the last position here, number three, due to sign alterations, it will come with minus because it's a first row and fourth column, one plus four is five, odd number. That's why we have the negative sign, negative three. And this is a minor next to it. <clears throat> now, if you continue on, with this way of evaluating the, uh, the, sorry, the determinant, you will need then to take your cross, cross and drag it across the first row here. That will give you another three terms. Then you drag, drag your cross across the first three elements in the first row here, another three, three terms, and the same story here, another three terms. <coughs> Altogether, nine terms. Those probably you can do from the top of your head, like we did last time. But even, even, even if you can do that, it still will be quite substantial computational effort. I'm not going to finish that effort. I think, well, <laughs> uh, if, well if you want to finish that effort, I can give you a hint. Uh, uh, I, actually, I finished this effort once. It was 12 months ago. And I think I, I'm not going to repeat that feat. Uh, but I did that. This one, this determinant returned 123. This one returned 211. And this one, oh, one 112. Uh, this, the value of this one was 112. Now, to show you the efficiency of uh, elementary row operations when it comes to evaluating the determinants, look what you, what you can do instead of doing the row decomposition for the very first matrix you start, up, you start with. What you can do instead, you can take your matrix. It's the same matrix as here, just I will, I will change the shape of the brackets here. Rather than putting the vertical bars, I put here the parentheses. Because now I change the context. Now it is a matrix rather than the determinant of a matrix. And if you do row reduction three times, and you vanish this element, this element, and this element, if you do this row reduction three times, it will be a new matrix. Here it is. On this step, on this step, from this matrix to this one, I did my row reduction three times. I used my first row to vanish entries under, underneath this first pivot. 
I hope you can figure out which, exa which exactly row operations I did. By now, I hope you, you, you can do that. But it's not the point of the, of the current presentation. The point is that because of my previous slide, if I give a name to this matrix, so if I call it B, this new matrix, technically speaking, it's a different matrix. And the connection between my B and A is as three row reduction operations. Due to my previous slide, I can claim I can claim that the determinants of A and B are identical. This is because of my previous slide. And so rather than going rather than going after the determinant of this original A, I will go after the determinant of my B. And this one is very easy. Well, a lot easier than my previous one, because if I use my first column here for the decomposition, if I use my first column, if I take my cross again and I will start dragging my cross across the first column, look, out of these four terms we expecting from the general row or column decomposition method, only one will be non-zero, the very first one. This term, this one and this one, they all will vanish. So my determinant of B, which is effectively determinant of A, is simply 1 times this one single minor. So my determinant of B is this minor, 1 minor alone. I can put here dots just to emphasize that there was a bit of an argument justifying this identity. And I convey this argument verbally, I hope. But that's how it is. And now when I go after this determinant, now I can use my row decomposition, say, oh, column decomposition. Again, I will benefit from the, from the presence of one extra zero here. Let's just see which way I went. I went the row way. So when I do the row decomposition for this determinant, it will be six with extra negative. And this minor, and then it will be seven or negative 7, and this minor. Each of them, we know what's the value. I mean, we know what this value is, negative 14 plus 40, 26. And here, negative 14, negative 8, negative 22, negative 7. So the final value is negative 2. Regardless whether you're going to finish this first approach or not, you can't deny that evaluating nine terms and evaluating two terms gives you a substantial advantage time-wise. <coughs> yeah, so we see if you combine your row reduction with the minor method, effectively, you can reduce your computational load significantly. Uh, any questions?